will find her, okay? Poor Catalina. Lyria's kidnapping has hit her extra hard. We'll save her, no matter what. Of course. I don't care how strong they are. I'm not... We're not giving up. Look. Lyria's grown so much since she met you. Almost every night, she would come and tell me about her day, and all the new things she experienced with you and the crew. And each time, I was more and more glad we all found ourselves on this journey together. I won't let it end here. I promised Lyria that we'd see the world. That we'd see the end of the skies. So I swear, we'll get her back. Together, as a crew. Lyria. I hope Eugen's not beating himself up too much. Hey, Captain. Can you ever forgive me? For what? Sorry, but I gotta apologize. See, I had a bad feeling the second I saw that red ship. When you've been through as much as I have, you develop a sixth sense for danger. But I still ignored the warning bells. Damn it all! So much for calling myself a guardian. Can't protect a damn thing. Well, I ain't giving up on Lyria. I'm bringing her home, and nothing's gonna stop me. Oh, they'll pay. I'll show them what an old vet can do. Seems useful. Excuse me. <laughs> Let's get... get some tail. Easier than eating apples. Rosetta's lost in thought. I wonder what she's thinking. Tell me, Captain. 
How are you feeling today? Pretty good, actually. Ah, I see. I like that confidence. Thankfully, it looks like you've healed up just fine. But we can't wait around any longer. Our princess awaits her rescue. It's going to work out. Ready for some action? Got an order? What should I strengthen? Let's kick it up a notch. A complete success. I'll unlock its hidden potential. I'll handle it. Good. Always aim for the top. I'll unlock it. Unlocked! I'll handle it. How about that? Let's kick it up a notch. I'll unlock its hidden potential. Let's kick it up a notch. Which one? Show me. Show me. Come back sometime. Wow. Despite it all, Eo seems determined. Promise I made with Lyria? We were gonna ask Rosetta to teach us how to put on makeup. I wonder if Lyria's crying right now. It must be scary being alone. <sighs> I can't stand it! We have to save her! Lyria. Pardon me. I heard what happened with Lyria. I'm not 
much use in a fight myself, but maybe I can help in my own small way. Please, take this. Want your weapons tempered? I'll unlock its hidden, but don't forget about upkeep. Rackham looks ready to take off the second we say go. You don't think they're gonna do anything to her, do you, Captain? Either way, we have to save her. Damn straight. She's the ray of sunshine on our crew. Good thing we know where that red ship is going. Grand Cypher will hunt it down in no time. But once we catch him, those punks are gonna pay for what they did. They can run, but they can't fly from the Grand Cypher. Not while I'm helmsman. We promised to meet up with Fix-It Dude. Let's head for the dock. Hello there. Skyfarers, we need your aid. Goblins! Goblins in Tempeel! We were at the dock in Folka, taking care of landing procedures, when a panicked old merchant rushed toward us. In between his wheezing, he explained that a shipment of relief supplies headed for Tempeel had been intercepted by monsters. <sighs> Tempeel reminded me of Id and how he had totally beat our butts. It was embarrassing, yeah, but what's worse, it reminded me of losing Lyria. Tempeel, huh? Maybe this time around I can actually help out. That wasn't Vern's usual peppy tone. He was probably reliving those bad memories, just like me. I guess after you've spent as much time together as we have, you pretty much share a brain. It wasn't going to be a fun journey to Tempeel for either of us, but we were skyfarers, and desperate times called for brave faces. Anyway, goblins, smart, fast. That meant we wouldn't have the luxury of time. We needed to throw together the minimum amount of supplies needed for the journey and head out. I turned to Vern so we could discuss game plans, but then I saw his ears were droopy. If we're fighting goblins, then we should have them licked by lunch. Something was wrong, but with the hasty flight preparations, I couldn't spare the few minutes to investigate. Pull through it, Vern, I thought. We need you. A little less than an hour later, it was time to depart. But Vern was nowhere to be found. Hurry, Skyfarers! We can't waste another second! The later we got there, the more supplies would be stolen or destroyed. This could add up to weeks or even months of delay in Tempeel's restoration. Vern, I hope you're okay, bud. I was worried out of my mind. But a captain's gotta do what a captain's gotta do. I left a message for Vern with the merchant, and we set out. Bob 
goblins. I can't even fight stinking goblins. What good am I? Just a scaredy lizard who brings everybody down. Man. If only I was more like my pal, swinging swords and shooting spells. Then I'd finally be able to help out. Maybe I could have stopped Avia from taking Lyria. Maybe I could have done something. How do you live the sky-faring life without combat skills? Heck, I can't even blow sparks, much less fire. What kind of dragon can't breathe fire? Ha! Huh, I tell everybody I'm a cool dragon, but I'm just a faker. You are unworthy. You were right, Ed. I'm not worthy. Not worthy of being in the crew. Not worthy of being the captain's best bud. Ah, oh, finally, here you are. I was looking everywhere for you. Uh-huh. What did this old dude want with me? Your captain left you a message. The crew's gone on ahead, but as an indispensable member of the Grand Cipher, they want you with them as soon as possible. And that's an order. Uh, indispensable? That meant, like, VIP, right? Me? For a second there, I was about to blow it off. Like, yeah, right, my bud's just saying that. But then I remembered. This crew had always kept it real. No lies. No flattery. Yeah, we kicked butt because we believed in one another. These guys were my best friends. And maybe we weren't perfect. I mean, we lost to Id, but my bud put his captain boots on and got right back up and tried again. It was never about swords or magic. It was about always moving forward, never giving up. And more than anything, it was about being there for each other. Who was I worrying about? Who cares if I couldn't fight? There are a million and two ways to help on an adventure. I mean, you try questing without a cook or a healer. Hello? Merchant of Urn, do you read me? If you're done daydreaming now, I've got a ship ready to go. It was time to get a move on, or I wasn't worth my scales. Sorry, everybody. Your pal Vern is on his way. Okay, people. It's go time. The supply should be this way. Let's move. Uh-oh. Our potion stock's running low. We'll be okay against a few goblins, right? Let's Hopefully. <laughs> just don't overdo it. Finish! How about no? Break him, Lake! Pass the Take him out! <sighs> sure hope Vern's okay. He was really down, wasn't he? <laughs> Poor Vern. <laughs> More. Right when we were about to cross a finish. I see people! Over there, by the supplies! We have to go help them! Folks doing okay? Scott there! Wait, it's doing better now. We need these supplies to repair some fuel. Please, would you protect them? We're on it. Take cover, okay? I like that. Look at me. Follow me. Cut them down. Got him in my crosshairs. Wow. The honor's all mine. I think that was the last of them. Thank you. You've saved Temtil's future. Heads up. Goblin reinforcements. Just don't quit. Here come more of those stinking gobbles! 
Can you take them? Sure can. Everyone okay? My thanks. There's a little paper. If those goblins managed to steal any more of the supplies, then the relief effort's good as done. No kidding. They've already hauled half our grain to higher ground. Higher ground? Sounds like a job for a cool dragon. That's a great idea, Vern. Put your wings to use. Are you sure you can manage? Well, what if the goblins fought you? Piece of cake. I'll be back in 30 seconds or we running back. <laughs> I found some of the stolen supplies. They're safe and sound. Like <laughs> <Lightning. laughs> Looking good. Yep. <laughs> Panacea. Thanks. Go get him. Here, I brought potions. Everyone feeling better? Thanks, Vern. You're a lifesaver. Those goblins are getting nasty. Don't fall for their tricks. Just like that. That was great. Hey, protecting you, young march, is what I live for. Nope. I'll finish this. Devastation. Looking good. There's a little paper. Just like... Uh, the fun. Looking good. You reap what you sow. They got some sort of barter. Into the fire. Got them all back. Those stinking gobbles didn't Three. get a single sack. The enemy have started their retreat. I think the worst has passed. Thanks to you, Skyfarers. Tempeel's finally gonna be rebuilt. <laughs> we owe you everything. <sighs> Vern was the real MVP. Aw, oh, shucks. Huh? I bet you say that to all your lifelong pals. Give it your all. <laughs> Skyfarers, never fail. After we'd secured the supplies, Vern talked about how he didn't think he was good enough for the crew. Obviously, he was the only one that felt that way. I'd always appreciated his support. During fights, he was a supply runner, lookout, and cheerleader. And both on and off the battlefield, he was my courage. But even the best people, and dragons, get discouraged sometimes. I really should have been more vocal about my appreciation. I made sure he knows now. We won the day because he came flying to the rescue. Just like I knew he would. <laughs> I'll always be there for you, pal. He was back to his old self, basking in the praise of the crew. Which caused his ego to swell like a balloon, but hey, who doesn't need a little confidence boost after a dip? And Vern... Let me just say it now. I value you. And all the hard work you do. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Call it a side effect of being a helmsman, but my ears tend to laser in on any talk of airships. Then again, damn near anybody could have heard this guy shouting. No! No! Y you can't do this! She's still Skyworthy! She can still fly! A distraught man was making a scene outside. 
Three seemingly unfazed onlookers surrounded him. Between all the belly aching, I pieced together the man's story. He was an engineer, was upset that an airship called the Nautilus was set to be decommissioned. His three friends, meanwhile, were telling him to see reason that an old ship like that would be more useful as scrap. Reminded me of the Port Breeze days, back when my own dreams seemed like unscalable walls. The three onlookers were a young helmsman, a young mechanic, and an older merchant. They presented a unified front against the engineer, countering each of his arguments threefold whenever he opened his mouth to protest. As much as I wanted to help the guy, the trio were speaking the truth. Repairing the damn thing would cost buckets of rupees, and you can't fix an airship on gumption alone. Trust me, I've tried. Them's the brakes, kid. I turned to leave. None of my business, right? But dumb old me, I had to pause as my ears caught what he said next. We made a pact, didn't we? Don't you remember? The Nautilus. You promised that we would take her to the skies. He could barely hold it together. He could hear it in his voice, the desperation as he clung to a quickly fading dream. It was a feeling all too familiar to me. I mean, sure, the Nautilus may be old, but she's got plenty of potential. She could easily outpace any other cargo ship in the fleet, at least three times faster. Found the poor bastard blathering his woes at a tavern in Folka. The seat next to his happened to be conveniently open, so I took it. Without so much as asking my name, he launched into story after story. It was clear he still needed to vent. Apparently, he just recently started his career as an engineer, planned on restoring the Nautilus. It would revitalize the local economy, help Folka this, assist Tim Peel that. He went on and on, but I knew he wasn't going to feel better until he confronted the actual issue at hand. Don't get me wrong, I think it's great you want to help your home like this, but that's not the real reason you're upset, is it? That obvious, huh? I, uh made a promise to my friends. One day we'd fly our beloved Nautilus across the skies together. But the ship in question was long past its heyday and had deteriorated beyond the point of conventional repair. Time is a cruel but patient mistress, and among the original Nautilites, only Kent had yet to accept reality. After he finished his explanation, silence fell between us. Well, until another man frantically stumbled into the tavern. I'd seen him somewhere before. Oh yeah, one of the naysayers from earlier, the merchant. Somebody help! Anybody! Monsters are ransacking my precious cargo! I was torn. Do my civil duty as a skyfarer and save the cargo, or help this ass determined to crush the dreams of my newfound friend? So, I asked Kent. What? Uh, of course you should help him! Not a moment's hesitation from the kid. I like that. This would have been the perfect moment to ensure the continued survival of the Nautilus, at least in the short term. But despite that, Kent didn't think twice about helping his fellow man. Hell yeah, Kent. I'll see what I can do. Damn. Can't we take some R&R &R instead? to the merchant. Our destination should be around here. I just hope there's anything left to save. Let's get moving.
Goblins? What the hell are they doing here? That all rain hell on them! Come on! Bring it! Have at I'll say we didn't warn you. Fire! That all? Enchanted land! Fire! Meet your end! Get behind my shield! Come on! Bring in the quick! <laughs> Time. Not bad, if I say so myself. Now then, we're well. Spring it! Play the eyes! That must be the cargo we're looking for. Cargo's safe and sound. Maybe. Looks like it's been rummaged through. Watch out, Rackham! We've got goblins and wyverns on our trail! Don't say more than that to do bus. Heads up, people! Hot enough for ya? Things are about to get dicey. Just don't let them get close to the cargo. It's go time! Take that! There's no more of them! Stay sharp, everybody! Too hot to handle! Go time! Don't let up! Got a bullet for ya! Enough of you! Don't let up! No. Bring it! Bring it! Go fire! Upsy daisy! Let's go! It's go time! You reap what you sow! Oh, you're in for it! Ah, trigger finger is itching! Watch out! Go time! Fire! Oh, no! Come on! Ever tasted lead? Come on! Rain hell on So the big shot finally decided to show up, huh? Well, you're going down like the rest of them. Hot enough for ya? Bring it! Don't let up! Take that! Play the eye! Go top! You monsters screwed up big time today, because you chose to mess with the best crew to ever cross these skies. Go time! Ha! Another one bites the dust. Oh. oh, you're a lifesaver. How could I ever thank you? You want to thank someone, thank him. I gestured toward Kent, the man's face filled with shame as the irony dawned on him. So it was you, huh? Hey, uh, hey, listen. I'm sorry about earlier. I could have heard you out. After the merchant left, I wanted to focus on the next goal at hand. Putting some wind back in the Nautilus's sails. So I proceeded to do some intelligent and, dare I say, brilliant thinking on the topic when Kent asked what I was talking about. Whoops. Must have been thinking out loud again. You just wait and see. When Tempeel was hit by a devastating storm, refugees flocked to the safe haven of Fulka. We heard the news and docked on the island, which was buzzing with activity. It was clear. All hands were needed on deck as reconstruction efforts got underway. So we walked through the city, 
looking out for opportunities to help. That's when we saw a distressed young giraffe. We didn't know the details, but it was plain as day that something wasn't right. He was stumbling around, eyes unfocused and staring into space. I couldn't shake the feeling that we shouldn't leave him on his own. So we ended up trailing him. We came to the edge of a cliff. Though the morning sun shone on our faces, a frigid wind blew down our backs. The draft just stood at the edge, staring at something only he could see. Hey, careful there! With the wind whipping around like this, you might lose your footing! The draft whirled around, taken off guard. After a while, he looked away, shrugging. Uh, thanks for your concern. You look like you've got something on your mind. If you want a friendly ear, you've got him here. I guess I do. He smiled, though the expression didn't reach his eyes. The draft introduced himself as Carzeda. Back in Tempeel, he was a jeweler's apprentice. My childhood friend was caught up in that storm. I was in love with her. Could never get up the courage to tell her. And now it's too late. Garzeda bit down on his lip, as if he was trying to hold back his despair. He went on, telling us that he'd hit a slump in his apprenticeship. Nothing he did could gain his master's approval. His frustration boiled over, and he got into a rip-roaring fight with his friend. Hurt, she fled from the workshop. He didn't go after her. I wish I had, because that's the day the storm came. Garzada's face twisted in agony. He made a mistake, and it ended up costing him someone dear. I could understand all too well. Garzada stared at the sunbeams as they illuminated the cliffside. His eyes were watering, and not just from the sun's rays. When we were kids, we made a promise. Once I became a proper jeweler, I'd share my most treasured secret with her. Cowardly, yes, but that was the only way I could tell her how I felt. Ah, it all made sense now. His deepest, darkest regret was putting off telling her was in his heart for so long. We made that promise ages ago. I... I wouldn't have been surprised if she forgot all about it. Garzada paused, as if remembering something. He lifted his gaze to the sky, then continued. Oh, right. I have to go back to the mines in Tempeel. There are keepsakes of hers there. I don't think she can move on without them. I could tell how important this was to him, but when the people fled Tempeel, a horde of monsters moved right on in. Actually, forget the fiends. Carzada wasn't in shape to go anywhere right now. What do these keepsakes look like? I can head to the mines and track them down for you. Considering his condition, I wasn't about to give him room to argue. Besides, I know all about not being able to share the important stuff with a loved one while there's still time. There's so much I didn't get to tell my family. Even now, thinking of our old house makes my heart ache something fierce. That day, there was no one to greet me when I opened the door. Seeing the cold remains of my home tore open a void in my heart. But you know what? I managed to keep going because my friends were there for me. This time it was my turn to support someone who needed it. The keepsake should be somewhere around here. Might as well inspect the mine shafts as we go too. Got something for you! 
to find those keepsakes. A watering can, a shovel. These are the keepsakes. easy. Great! Let's head back to town. Sheesh. Place was crawling with goblins. Good thing we came instead of Carzada. Carzada said his friend loved flowers. Tempeel's soil was harsh and didn't lend itself to flora. But her dream was to grow a variety of flowers and let them bloom all over the land. Knowing how much her dream meant to her, Carzada wanted to bring her gardening tools back and place them in front of her grave. His hands were trembling when I passed them over. Thank you. Thank you so much. He was so choked with emotion that each word sounded pained like thorns sticking in his throat. I kept my eyes on him. It felt like if I looked away for even a second, he'd fade into the great blue beyond. He was still grappling with his hurt. You wanted to say goodbye to her properly, right? Come on, I'll go with you. I slapped him on the shoulder, silently willing him to pull himself together. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Thank you. Carzada hugged the tools tightly against his chest, his teeth biting down hard on his lip. It broke my heart, seeing someone so young deal with such overwhelming tragedy. The least I could do was help him see this through. I was born in a snow-laden hamlet, peopled by Harvins, small folk more accustomed to the plow than the sword. We believe the sky's far too vast for us, and 
as I was soon to learn, its dangers far too many. It happened when I was yet a green, callow youth. I strayed beyond our fences and into the claws of a monster. I cried for help, but all that met my voice were the howls of the wind. Abandoned even by hope, I could only give myself up to death. But before the darkness took hold, I saw brilliant figures skimming the sun-kissed snow. They were the Lumiel Order of Holy Knights, come to my rescue! Oh, that there were words bright enough to reflect their flashing swords as they did battle with the beast! Or sounds tender enough to echo the kindness with which they took my hand and led me home. What can I say, but that they were as mighty and generous as the sun? On that fateful day, they gave me life and guidance. I learned that by shutting your eyes to danger, you only leave it free to wander in the darkness. Thus, I resolved to turn toward the light and become defender to the skies. I would join Lumiel and, with my farmer's hands, bear aloft the banner of virtue. I threw all my being into training, begrudging no amount of sweat or tears. And, with the passing of days, that little girl lost in the snow grew to become the captain of the Lumia Order of Holy Knights. As captain of an order of knights, I was faced with a colossal problem. And that was my small stature. No one had ever heard of a Harvin leading a charge, what with our stout legs and poor reach. Now that I lived among drafts and humans, I would have to develop a style of combat that would turn my size, if I may so phrase it, into a matter of little importance. Seeing that I worked twice as hard, despite being half as large, my compatriots grew to respect me, and I was appointed captain. Their very heartstrings thrummed with joy. But even the brightest diamond has its flaws. Within Lumiel's proud walls, there were some that scoffed to behold a Harvin captain of their knights. For my part, I cared not what was said of me. However, I would not stand to have the good names of my comrades dragged through the mud. We are an august and redoubted order. And I'd rise up to that image, by any means necessary. Thus began my days of height exercises, stretching devices, and miraculous concoctions. Not all came from reputable sources, but I took a tactical approach. If it had a chance of working, I'd try it. Days grew into weeks, which grew into months. But I grew not one inch. Then, it happened. Right as I was on the verge of losing all hope, word reached me of a distant village that had devised a height tonic. Here was the answer to all my prayers. With expectation lending a spring to my step, I slipped from my quarters and set out on my quest. I had to take a mountain pass to the village, which was, in a word, perilous. Of course, I refer not to the countless monsters and bandits, whom I took down with ease. It was the tall steps and great boulders, insurmountable obstacles for a harven. I was forced to return to the foothills where, through Lady Sierra Carte, I sent out a dispatch for help. That was how I met the captain and crew of the Grand Cipher. With their aid, I reached the village without further incident, only to have my dreams utterly crushed. It turned out that this magic tonic was merely your average growth stimulant, 
designed to help a budding youth blossom to a seemly height. It could do little for a woman like me, already in the prime of her life. Thus, all my best efforts were dashed to foam. For the first and only time in my life, I cursed fate for cutting me out of so short a cloth. However, it was within the depths of despair that I would find a new hope. The crew of the Grand Cipher was bound for Estelusia, which is said to be an island of miracles. Could not some power there give me what I seek? With newfound resolve, I was determined to accompany the captain to the end of the skies. Needless to say, it pained me to take leave of the Lumiel Order. I still remember the look of surprise on former officer Bautorda's face when I told him of my resolution. But in the end, he expressed his admiration for me and my quest to become the very figure of virtue. Lady Bridget and Lady Cordelia also gave me their blessings. Oh, there are no words to express how grateful I am to my kind comrades. I dream of the day I can return to them with my head held high, and its crown measuring many feet taller, being, at long last, in both body and spirit, the captain they deserve. Such are my thoughts as I peer out over the railings of the Grand Cipher unto boundless, majestic skies. <laughs>